Hello everyone, welcome. I hope you had a lovely lunch. Uh, my name is Giovanni Gardovic from the performance team uh, SUSE. And uh, I, in this presentation, I will uh, uh, describe a patch that is currently um, uh, under review in the <coughs> Linux kernel um, made by uh, Oracle and Intel that re-architect uh, kernel uh, preemption. Um, so let's begin. Here in this slide, I put with uh, the, uh, the moniker laws of scheduling two concepts that uh, if you are not uh, familiar with the internal of the operating system, I believe it uh, is important to keep in mind. Um, the first one, um, I would say that scheduling is um, mostly driven by interrupts and uh, uh, in um, the description of this patch and in general in understanding preemption is uh, uh, important to have this uh, uh, in focus. Um, when uh, uh, thinking about interrupts, that could obviously be uh, a key of your keyboard that you press or some packet that arrives uh, from the network, but then the scheduling would be a rather random uh, uh, process. There is obviously one specific interrupt, which is the tick, the scheduler interrupt, that makes sure that if nothing else happened, at least uh, uh, the system is making progress. And uh, the second law, uh, I, as I call it, is that interrupt handlers uh, cannot uh, be preempted, and uh, this is how Linux is designed, and uh, the reason is that they do not have a task context, so if the scheduler puts an interrupt <laughs> to sleep, takes it off the CPU, uh, it cannot uh, wake, it, wake, it, uh, wake it up, uh, because there is nothing to wake up. Uh, the interrupt is host of the task that interrupted. And as a corollary, um, you cannot, uh, preempt uh, the holders of a, of a spin lock. Um, if you're new to this uh, context, as I was uh, some time ago, uh, make sure you understand that uh, what is not uh, preemptible here is the um, task that is actually holding the lock and walking through the critical section. Um, the, the one that is spinning and is contending the lock, yes, it cannot be preempted, but uh, it is more trivial. The part uh, that uh, um, we're interested about is the holder of the lock. Why? Because you need to do synchronization in uh, interrupts, handler, somehow, and uh, let's do it with spin locks. So you need to make sure that when you are uh, um, uh, traversing a critical session of a spin lock, you don't get preempted, because if that happened in an interrupt, that would be very bad. Another uh, 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 concept that I would like to uh, say at the beginning, um, the way I, um, I, would, I would say uh, we can see scheduling is uh, um, the, the, a natural theory. I put this word natural because those are the uh, place, places in the operating system where it is uh, um, more um, uh, the canonical scheduling point, canonical opportunities to invoke the scheduler, which is return to user space, and that can happen uh, uh, after a syscall or after an interrupt handler that interrupted user space, or returning to the kernel. Returning to the kernel from what? From an interrupt handler. The first two would constitute what is called user space preemption, preemptive multitasking, and the other one is uh, uh, kernel preemption. Um, Let's refresh our memory and make sure we, uh, uh, we all agree that uh, processes can either be running or sleeping. If they are uh, running, they would be uh, in kernel mode or uh, user mode. But at some point, uh, they may need a resource, and so they uh, go off the CPU and wait for that resource. Or they can be taken out, they taken off the CPU by the scheduler. At some point, either way, they will be in this uh, condition, in this situation here, um, runnable. And the job of the scheduler is to um, go into this bag of uh, runnable processes and uh, uh, find the CPU uh, for them. Um, so uh, the, the patch that uh, I am describing, again, uh, this is not uh, my work, it's not something uh, that uh, 
It, it is the kind of talk that you give so that you have an opportunity to better understand uh, this concept. Uh, it's um, introducing uh, what uh, the author called preempt uh, auto. And uh, it is um, a way to um, keep things uh, as they are right now, but uh, uh, changing the underlying implementation of uh, preemption in Linux. In Linux, we have uh, uh, four flavors of preemption. They're called uh, non, no kernel preemption, voluntary, it's a bit of a strange beast, full, the kernel is fully preemptible, and uh, RT, the region where uh, the kernel cannot be preempted, are even smaller than in full. So, what, and, so this is the situation on the, on the left, the situation we have today. But uh, um, this patch, again, is under review, so not yet merged, but it is uh, likely to be hit as the support of, uh, this is from an idea of uh, Thomas Gleixner, uh, Linus Torvald likes it, and it's uh, developed by uh, an Oracle engineer, um, uh, Ankur Arora. Mm, I, the name is in a, in, a, in a slide that will come. So how, what, what, what will we have with this patch? The flavors are still there. It's going to be non, voluntary, full. I'm going to ignore RT because this patch does not concern the uh, Linux real time. But those three um, flavors, non, voluntary, and full, are going to be implemented or emulated uh, with uh, a fully preemptive kernel. So, uh, the, again, the underlying uh, infrastructure is going to be a um, fully preemptive kernel that will uh, pretend that there is no kernel preemption, that will um, offer the same uh, behavior in terms of latency, in terms of throughput, but uh, the, the plumbing is completely different. But if... Uh, um, in, um, in a future slide, I will, uh, I will uh, um, say... Uh, what is the key idea that make that work, but when I saw this code, it's surprisingly short, and I was um, um, uh, surprised of how you, you can uh, uh, solve uh, this, uh, this problem with, uh, um, um, with, uh, with limiting the, um, uh, the flavor to actually one. Description of uh, the flavor as they are today, this, uh, these two ribbons uh, represent uh, processes, one process on the bottom and one process on the top. Time is going from left to right. And uh, uh, this uh, is uh, no kernel preemption. The um, colors represent the stages of execution of those processes. The process is running uh, some user space code, invokes a syscall. Returning from the syscall, as we saw before, the uh, natural uh, 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 strategic place where to put a, a scheduler in invocation, um, scheduler is invoked, there is something else to run, and so we have a context switch. There is another uh, situation, which is the second natural uh, uh, place where you can invoke the scheduler, is when an interrupt um, catches this task in user space. And, um, uh, the, uh, at, the, at the exit of the interrupt handler, again, scheduler is invoked, there was something uh, to run, and um, we have a context switch. Actually, there is more. There are uh, those, uh, uh, there, there is this function called condrescad, which is, uh, um, uh, does not belong to the natural point that I described at the beginning, and the, they are, um, uh, invocation of the scheduler placed uh, by uh, Linux kernel developer uh, in, um, in places where it was convenient, it was found that there was some uh, latency that could be reduced, and so uh, the uh, explicit invocation of the scheduler has uh, uh, increased uh, over time, and the, um, the the purpose of this patch is exactly this. So why would you change the entire infrastructure if there is no user visible change? Um, to get rid of this uh, uh, um, kind of ad hoc uh, scheduler uh, invocations. Voluntary, well, voluntary has the same uh, scheduling opportunity as none, return to, uh, to user space, and, 
And there are some other ad hoc invocation of the scheduler. Um, they are in, uh, from a different function, which is called my sleep, but still uh, uh, they, um, the, we have uh, uh, a, a function uh, that is proper to the scheduler done in other pieces of code. So uh, this uh, a violation of the, the, the principle where the scheduler should schedule and not other parts, uh, other parts of the code. What is the difference between a might sleep and a condor scared? Well, the, 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 the fact that they are in different places, there is no subs, uh, 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 substantial uh, difference. Uh, voluntary has all the condor scared plus those might sleep. So there are um, uh, uh, ulterior uh, invocations uh, uh, throughout uh, the code. Um, the, the, um, the, the difference is, uh, as uh, this historical reason, Condrescad is uh, some developer, sometimes even us, uh, uh, facing a bug, some latency we don't like, and we, we, we make sure that uh, it's safe to schedule, and we invoke the scheduler at, uh, at that point. The latency goes away, but the Condrescad stays there in the code. Might sleep uh, was originally 20 years ago, it still is, but uh, a debug annotation marking some functions where it is safe to sleep. And uh, Ingo Molnar in uh, 2005 had the, there was a, a situation where uh, latency was uh, not accepted by uh, some Linux user, and he had this idea of since this annotation tells me that it's, it's safe to schedule. Maybe I can actually schedule there. Uh, the review of that uh, particular change that ended up being uh, preemption voluntary was uh, um, someone actually said the fact that it might sleep doesn't mean it should. Uh, it could be safe to, um, to schedule, meaning the system doesn't crash, but suboptimal. Um, as you can imagine, this, uh, uh, in the, this uh, cause of the scheduler throughout the, uh, the Linux kernel and not managed directly from, from the scheduler, have, uh, uh, they would rot over time because when you find in the code a contra sched written by someone else, maybe five or 10 years prior, uh, you doubt that it's useful, but you go there and remove it. I mean, uh, you never know. Maybe, maybe someone will complain and you have to deal with the fallout. So those uh, contra sched they are added, but they're never removed. Um, and so it is, um, it is a sort of pollution of, and, and violation of this principle of uh, separation of concern where the scheduler schedules. The, the audio driver does audio stuff. It's not um, uh, mixed. And uh, the, the various developers uh, uh, have uh, observed that uh, uh, the fact that you end up needing those uh, contra uh, uh, here and there is a symptom of, uh, um, of an imperfect design. In, in, the, in the review of the patch, the, or the preempt auto patch, Ingo Molnar, who, uh, who, who put the scheduled invocations in, the, in my sleep, he um, made a distinction between those two as um, um, uh, my sleep are uh, um, essentially random scheduling point because uh, the, the annotation was there, but there was no intention to schedule, so um, unexpected scheduling point. While he called the uh, uh, Condrescad uh, expert annotations of the code, which uh, um, it's debatable. Uh, and and uh, uh, above all, they degrade over, the quality of this scheduling point degrades over time, right? Um, so after we discussed the uh, Condrescad and my sleep, let's have a look at uh, preemption full. Uh, the third natural uh, place where you would schedule is on uh, the return from interrupt, but this time is the interrupt happening in kernel code, in kernel mode. So again, we have uh, user space, uh, invocation of a syscall, and uh, um, we have an interrupt. We return from the interrupt and we invoke the schedule. Uh, the, the, the difficulty in implementing this kind of, uh, 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 implementing kernel preemption is that uh, um, you can't really always uh, uh, preempt. There are, as we saw, regions such as spin locks, 
internet handler themselves. And so um, uh, the implementation of full kernel preemption uh, was, uh, uh, had uh, uh, a long uh, um, uh, period of uh, 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 troubleshooting and, uh, and, it's, and it's been perfected over the years. Um, so don't be fooled by the, uh, uh, the simplicity of this diagram. Now I will introduce a few characters to, um, uh, to, to, get, the, to get a full, um, um, uh, a full uh, picture of what um, the, the preempt order does. The first one is uh, uh, the scheduler uh, interrupt. Well, in the diagram before, I didn't represent the tick, but uh, um, they are... Uh, Periodic, they happen all the time, and they happen in uh, user space, in kernel space. They are what uh, uh, give the scheduler a sense of uh, uh, progress in uh, the time. So the tick is always there, and uh, it's an interrupt. Uh, it exits uh, uh, to user mode, to kernel mode, and uh, so uh, the scheduler makes use of it. It does. Uh, it, it has a function, and uh, um, uh, in particular, how do you know if on return, you want to invoke the scheduler. There is a, um, a flag that the tick will uh, assign to, uh, to a process, and, uh, and the tick will, uh, will check if the, uh, delta, the time the process has been running is more than the, the, the time slice that it was uh, allotted, and uh, it, will, it would uh, mark it for rescheduling. Now, the, the, this... Uh, Annotation: This uh, ma uh, mark can uh, uh, come in um, uh, in in, uh, in user mode or uh, or in kernel mode. What I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, a time slice, if is um, if it is overrun, but uh, the process, the task is in kernel mode, the tick will. Uh, will we'll, uh, mark the, the process for the scheduling, but uh, if the kernel is not preemptible, the, um, the task will not be preempted and the process will keep running. And so it is perfectly possible that uh, um, a time slice is uh, overrun. And uh, uh, now preempt count, which is the mechanism by which we know if it is uh, um, safe to uh, invoke the scheduler in the kernel. Um, in particular, are you holding a spin lock? We increment it when uh, we acquire, we decrement it when, uh, when we release. And, um, but that's not all. The information of uh, the necessity of a call to the scheduler is uh, stored in uh, the most significant bit of uh, this uh, variable, and it is the negation of this bit. So if uh, um, a rescheduler is needed, that bit would be zero, and uh, the, the condition for uh, kernel preemption to occur is, that, is uh, for this entire variable to be zero. So if there is no need to reschedule, the variable will never be zero, even, if, uh, even in a uh, region where it's safe to preempt. And now the, um, the, uh, the solution to, uh, to how can uh, we do without the contrast cat? Well, we are, uh, this, uh, this uh, mechanism utilizes a fully preemptible kernel. So it loses those uh, uh, explicit calls to the scheduler, but it can schedule uh, anywhere. So the idea is we, uh, it, it, it utilizes um, a, a fully preemptible kernel, and, uh, but the, uh, the, the information that the tick will store is on a separate flag, so not on the needless case, but on a different one that acts as a sort of a proxy, and depending on which flavor you want to emulate, you will then promote it or not when it is scared. So there is this uh, indirection that uh, allows you to 
pretend or uh, to schedule more or less than uh, a full, a, a pro properly fully printed kernel would do. And, um, and this is the, the simplicity of this solution uh, that, I, um, that, that I was pleased to, to see. Um, it, um, it obviously, uh, because the question is, we've been having Condress CAD for 20 years, right? Why didn't anybody think of this? Uh, you, you need um, a reliable, fully printable kernel that uh, is not something that was available uh, uh, last week, but also it took a while. So anyway, uh, Thomas Gleichsner that had this uh, intuition uh, together with Ankur Ar Arora from, uh, from Oracle um, implemented this in, uh, in preempt RT. So they have this uh, lazy bit that is not... Uh, immediately written into, into um, uh, preempt uh, um, count. So do we want to uh, promote the lazy bit or not? It depends on the policy. So the implementation is all the, in, all the infrastructure for knowing when it is safe to preempt, so preempt uh, count uh, fully um, available. But then, do we want to schedule or not? It's a scheduler decision. This was the philosophy with uh, which uh, Thomas uh, was uh, uh, operating, uh, saying, Condress Cat, it's in a, in a storage driver or something. There are many in, uh, in driver code. Doesn't belong there. Needs to be the scheduler and uh, to make policy decisions. So how do, how do, we, um, how do we implement? We now go through the exercise of, uh, hello, hello, Wojciech. <laughs> There's Wojciech over there. Uh, <laughs> Wojciech Pavlik, welcome. And so we will now go through the exercise of seeing how do we emulate none over full? How do we emulate voluntary over full? And then full over full, well, that's going to be easy because the kernel is already fully preemptible. Um, none. Uh, None is uh, a flavor where we uh, uh, schedule on return to user space from syscall or from interrupt, but also the counter scat. The counter scat is the, is, the, is the tricky part. They were every, every, uh, everywhere, and we don't have that anymore, but we don't want to lose that latency, right? So we need to find some, some other place to get it back. Um, what happens? The tick, as we saw, on a periodic uh, uh, pace of uh, interruption, sets needless get lazy. And uh, this uh, bit is evaluated at return to user space. Fine, this is exactly what uh, none was using to, uh, used to do. But the tick will, um, uh, if the tick catches this task in kernel mode and it has overrun the the, the, its time slice, it will now enforce it. You can't do that on a non preemptive kernel, but this is a preemptive kernel. Um, does that make any sense? Um, so, uh, that, that was so that's why I brought, hey, I can preempt. It is, um, I'm not, I'm just faking to be a no, non preemptive kernel. I, I can actually do a lot more. And so, um, what you lose with those uh, uh, expertly placed CondraScad, you get it back uh, enforcing the time, slice, the time slice anywhere, be it user mode or kernel mode. Voluntary. And, uh, and this is interesting because uh, the, the implementation of voluntary might... It's clear that the developer, Ankur and Thomas, um, they said, okay, voluntary is there, as an historical accident, okay? The, 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 it, it, it was uh, the response, uh, this clever intuition of Ingo Molnar to put, in, to put some, uh, some uh, scheduled invocation where, well, maybe he shouldn't have, but he it was, it was, it solved the problem. But now you have this uh, um, hybrid of a flavor that does not really correspond to any sort of uh, abstract intuition you can have. It's like random, right? It schedules everywhere. So the preempt auto developer needed to find something that was more preemptible than none, but less than full. So where do you, where do you put, you know? And, uh, and, and, and the solution is in the last line here. Um, the, um, 
let's go through all the line, but the solution is this last one. Uh, we set the, the needless get lazy, this newly introduced bit, at the tick. Right. Evaluated the return to user, of course. Tick will enforce time slice even if incurred, just as in none. Voluntary is a superset of none in terms of scheduling point. But then uh, we have this. Um, if there is, if, if there, if there is a, 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 a task in the run queue that is of a, of a higher scheduling class, meaning CF, CFS or, uh, yeah, mm, if, if, anyway, the lower scheduling class, CFS as of the, uh, or EVDF as of the latest kernel, then we have uh, uh, real time, then we have deadline, so deadline is higher than real time, which is higher than, than, than EVDF. So if there is a task that is of a higher class, then I, um, I, I preempt immediately even if incurred. So this is where like, I get the extra juice to, to be a little bit more preempted than none in, um, in order to um, don't disappoint my user that are still um, calling it voluntary. Right? So it's a different thing, right? That the scheduling points are in a different uh, location. And then we have full. As uh, you can imagine, full over full, it's uh, uh, needless CAD lazy, this proxy bit is uh, interpreted as needless CAD and done, no problem. Um, so now uh, I, I uh, th those, this is a useful table uh, uh, that is in the, in the patch and uh, um, it uh, summarizes um, the different, the, the three flavor which you see here in the column, and uh, uh, when do they, um, when when the, the the scheduling information is interpreted as uh, um, uh, lazy or eager. So none never use the needless get semantic. Always use the needless get lazy. So return to user plus enforcement of time slice. Voluntary, eager scheduling, if there is a higher, the, the, the task that is waiting is of a higher class. But otherwise, it's lazy. And full, of course, uh, always eager scheduling. Uh, meaning you find uh, the need for uh, rescheduling, next interrupt, whatever it is, schedule. And uh, the, this table instead is, uh, um, it, it says those, those bits when they are checked, and checked uh, uh, mean when, when this, the rescheduling happened. Uh, need rescheduled is the old one, which uh, uh, was the basis for full, uh, fully parental kernel, is checked at the exit to user mode, return to can kernel from an interrupt, and uh, 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 end of a non preemptible region. So, Preempt enable, and every, uh, all the time. While the lazy is um, uh, only gives you rescheduling at uh, essentially complete your time slice. That what it means. Uh, exit to user, yes, but uh, if you um, if you don't have need resched set, you will not invoke the schedule, right? So the first opportunity is exit to user if you. Um, you will be given the opportunity to consume your time slice. So the semantic, in fact, is uh, needless get lazy, um, run uh, until exhaustion of uh, your time slice, and needless get uh, uh, proper is uh, as soon as possible, meaning the first opportunity, most likely a tick in kernel mode. And uh, yeah, this, uh, th this is the slide which I, uh, I thought as, um, as, a, as a last one, I have an extra one, but uh, this is um, um, something that I, I would like to reflect here. The, um, the, the order in which the, the, the flavor were uh, developed, and um, so I was surprised by uh, Thomas Gleichsner having a, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but an incorrect recollection of the, uh, the timeline. Uh, not because I remember, <laughs> I wasn't there, I wasn't even, and, and Thomas got involved with, uh, with our team in 2005, 
but I went to the uh, Internet Archive and I got the receipts, you know, the, the emails and the... So the, the, the curious aspect for me was that full, full uh, kernel uh, preemption was um, implemented before voluntary and, uh, and not the other way around. If you, if you look at the, what the, what the um, preemption flavor mean, nothing, something, Everything, right? So you would, you, you would think of this kind of progression, but it, that's not the way it went. The, the no, pro, no, no kind of preemption, classic uh, Unix uh, um, design, Linux uh, uh, operating system, 1991, nothing serious, hobby project, that was uh, um, not, not preemptible. Then um, there was, uh, uh, reading an email archive, I, um, I had the impression that around the, the year 2000, there was this uh, great appetite for uh, making Linux uh, uh, printable on the kernel because I think, well, I had this feeling that any other, every other operating system was. Like uh, Solaris was, kernel, uh, um, uh, was fully preemptible and the Win Windows NT, I think, too. So uh, there was this uh, uh, desire to make uh, uh, Linux uh, fully preemptible <laughs> and uh, the code uh, for this was by Montavista. I forgot the name of the engineer. Uh, eventually, the maintainer uh, became Robert Love, uh, but um, he wasn't the primary author. Anyway, this uh, pr uh, uh, fully printed kernel didn't really work uh, uh, right off the bat, and uh, the, it, it took some, uh, some time to, because it exposed many, many um, problems in the, in the code itself. Uh, the, when you have uh, full preemption, your uniprocessor si system uh, behaves like a... Um, like, like, um, uh, multiprocessor, uh, uh, and so several uh, things uh, come to the surface, and uh, and so the 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 voluntary was it was a stopgap to um, uh, placate the um, complaints by the the multimedia community, in particular the the Jack project, um, audio server written by Paul Davis, and uh, in particular Lee Rivell was the person who. Uh, uh, interacted with uh, with Ingo for uh, uh, this uh, development, and uh, and so voluntary was a way to make uh, to give some at least some preemption since uh, full uh, wasn't really there. Um, but now we have this uh, uh, the classification that uh, seems like written in stone, but actually it was uh, it was. Um, uh, I, I called it before an historical accident, right? And, and, and it's uh, interesting that uh, uh, now that the design is, uh, th this proposal for, for, uh, for preemption auto is uh, um, much cleaner because up from the benchmark that the author posts, it reproduces the, it can do none, it can do full, but then they have to find a candidate for voluntary, which uh, it's, it's bizarre because uh, um, it's very difficult because it is, um, um, a, a sort of a Frankenstein kind of favor. And uh, yeah, Preempt uh, RT was uh, in the same year. Um, I, I believe Ingo was writing voluntary, and uh, I, I read this thread uh, last year. It's um, a long thread uh, from 20 years ago. But, and, uh, and in this, uh, uh, the discussion for voluntary, the, the proposal for uh, uh, preemptible spin lock, like let's make the spin locks preemptible, came. Uh, in order to um, remove uh, uh, latency and um, and so that that the, the development that uh, was from the same year. Uh, so this is all I have. Uh, what is that? 33 minutes. I think I booked 45. So there is a large uh, buffer for questions. Sorry. 11 minutes. Um, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, comment, uh, I. Did you like my handwriting? I don't know. I think. Uh... Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. I have a question. Uh, some t you mentioned country sket, uh, and I remember some expert constructions when. L large data is processed under a lock and uh, in order to improve the latency. So it's uh, some loop and 
at some iterations, the loop stops, uh, releases the lock, does count risk it, and then retakes the lock and continues processing the data. Right. And uh, then you said that uh, now with this new mode, uh, country scat uh, will be like no op, and uh, it will rely on the scheduler tick. But what happens if like most of this uh, loop processing is under a spin lock, for example, or some uh, semaphore? And uh, it, um, as you said in the beginning, it's not preemptible. Yeah. So st statistically, it would be difficult to hit with the scheduler tick uh, region that is not uh, preemptible. Yeah. I guess we'll see. Uh, I mean, no, no. So I, I believe I in these cases you, you have to leave Condriscat in place because essentially, so, so we have places in the kernel where where you are scanning, as you said, for example, long list, and if we see that we are actually scanning for a long enough time, we basically have to do usually some expensive operation to like pause the list iteration, store st the state somewhere else, unlock. And then we call Condriscat, you know, so, so that we don't spend in the kernel too much long. And then when we get scheduled again, we restore the state we have stored somewhere on the side and continue with the list iteration. And, and this is not possible to solve in an automated way because you have this like place specific code that needs to handle the release of the log storage of the state and restoring of the state because the list could have mutated while you were sleeping, for example. But but I believe that yes, you need to do the unlock and the state handling, but you don't need the actual country scat because unlock means preemption enable, and that's the point where the flag is evaluated, oh, right? Yeah, yeah the, 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 I didn't get, to, I didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so if you you have to do like need rescat check, and then then you are right that unlocking is actually enough. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah, I actually noticed that in one of your tables that there is like extra check point in uh, here, preempt count. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. what's not clear to me, it's like the place where if uh, it reaches zero uh, and need risk it is set, you would call. Stop. I'm not sure either. This is from the, from the, from the cover letter of the, of the um, patch. And I seem to recall to have read that when you uh, preempt enable, then uh, you schedule. Is that true? Yeah. Ah, okay. So, oh, okay. so yes. It, 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 in that case, the because the, the that is what was written on the mail, and I said, okay, I guess they schedule when preempt count is zero, but I wasn't sure. And uh, if you confirm, then uh, this uh, formulation is into it. Okay. So, so, so this check uh, fixes or re preserves yeah. the behavior for these uh, yeah. constructions. Thank yeah. The, is that called lock breaking? Is that possible? That the express lock breaking? Yeah. And, and Ingo, I think, uh, in a voluntary, 20 years ago, introduced this, uh, I think, lock breaking. I don't, I don't know if he invented it, but uh, if, uh, if I, if I uh, uh, understand correctly, you have this long-running spin lock, and um, it is, uh, you're, you're concerned about the latency, so you examine the code and see, maybe I can uh, uh, release acquire, essentially. Back to back, right? So, so, so the reality is that you get a bug report about kernel soft lockup. So you figure out, oh, okay. So I need to figure out how to break this lock in some place. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not always possible. Would you agree? It's a, a well, well, yeah. Sometimes it's very difficult because basically when you release the lock, the data structure can mutate, yeah. and so that's exactly the complex stuff where you need to somehow store your iteration state, you know. Yeah, so that because the lock was there for a reason. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was protecting something, so. Yeah, so, 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 so there are various ways how to approach this, how to be able to resume after you reacquire the lock. So, yeah, it's sometimes really hairy. <laughs> Jorgen and, uh, and uh, Peter Tesser. So basically, if you need to hold the spin lock that long and don't need to guard yourself against an interrupt handler, which would be, of course, bad when holding the lock so long, you should think of using a mutex, right? So, that, is the, that is the uh, yeah. right. It so, 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 so sure, but you know, this, these are usually kind of 
So, so usually the spin lock hold times are short, but then you have like these rare operations where you need to traverse the whole list, you know. So for example, you have lists where the common case is like insert or delete, which are quick. But then you have this like, let's evict the whole page cache from memory and that or whole button D cache from memory, which needs to scan the whole D cache list of all the entries. And so, so this like rare operation, which is not actually performance critical, you don't do it like on like you shouldn't do it on production usually, but but still it shouldn't crash the kernel if you do it. So this is exactly the place where you kind of have to deal with lo long spin log hold times for these like kind of exceptional operations. So so that's why you don't want to actually transition to mutex because that would slow down the fast cases you actually care about. Interesting, yeah. Um, just uh, to make sure I understand correctly, this new emulated preempt none is slightly different from the original. The original would always finish a syscall no matter how long it takes, if it's a half an hour, but this one will actually terminate, I mean, provided that it can be preempted, it would terminate when the time slices up. Yes, this is my understanding, okay. yes. Okay. Keep that in mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't see any raised hands, so I thank you for your time and I wish you to enjoy the rest of the conference. Have a good day. Thank you.